hello to everybody. Oh, so okay. um, I want to give you now a brief okay. overview on GIZ work on food losses, um, respective post-harvest losses. And in a second document, oh, I, I just uh, want to present you the draft terms of reference which we elaborated for a study, a study on food losses um, in Nigeria. So we start with, first with a PowerPoint presentation um, about GIZ approaches uh, in the area of reduction of food losses. Um, on this first uh, graphic, um, don't, don't be afraid and look too much into detail. It is just to give you an overview over the manifoldness of actors and institutions we found uh, uh, which are dealing with uh, the topic of food losses. Um, please understand this is a point of view of GIZ and the German side. It is clear that behind every, every actor who is on this graphic you will find another network and another network. But that just to show that um, I'm very glad that we can talk with FAO and World Bank here today because uh, they are important players in this field uh, in development cooperation. Uh, I hope that a lot of you uh, find themselves on these institutions. If not, please feel free to tell me and I would like to join you on our map just to get an overview who is dealing with whom. So, um, coming now to our experiences from former GLZ projects, which uh, have been running between 1980 and 1995. Uh, and this was, this was more or less uh, the end of the post harvest loss project. We found out that we still have more than 200 studies and publications and great literature, which is still available and where we have. <laughs> So if there's any interest uh, in having this list, please contact us. It's just uh, the, the, the um, wrap-up of the work which is still there and which wa we want to analyze. Um, besides that, we found uh, we have still more than 20 training courses where the material is still available and we are going to evaluate that as well just to see what can we still do with it. Coming to ongoing projects uh, and partner countries and value chains, we did a um, questionnaire to all our projects dealing with rural development and asking them if post-harvest losses or food losses are part of their formal project, means are part of their goal or indicators, or if post-harvest losses is a point in a project even if it is not a formal part. So the countries you see here are those countries who reply to our questionnaire. This is, it is not a complete overview what we are doing, but I suppose they are the most important countries. And um, just to see on the crops who are concerned and where food losses play a role in our projects. In Afghanistan, we have wheat, Irish potato, fruit, and vegetable. In Benin, we deal with cashew and with rice. In Bolivia, it is uh, several kinds of fruit, vegetable, cereal, milk, and meat. In Burkina, it, it is rice. In Ghana, it is cocoa, maize, and cassava. And uh, just to um, explain, in Ghana, it is a sustainable cocoa business. This is a regional project we are doing with the World Cocoa Foundation at Bell and Melinda Gates. And it's not only in Ghana. This project is in West Africa. And the study we are going to conduct in Nigeria uh, is part of this project, sustainable cocoa business. Um, another regional project which is based in Ghana, but which covers the whole uh, most of the West African countries uh, are um, from the African Cashew Initiative. Uh, and there we have uh, fruit like um, um, maize, uh, fruit, vegetable, chili, and cashew. Um, we have another project in Ghana, which is just a national project in Ghana, which is a maize post-harvest value chain development project. Uh, and uh, the most important topic for the moment is upgrading of the Tikiman maize market in Ghana. 
Another project which you don't find here is in South Sudan, uh, value chains in oil seed and cassava and maize flour. So in Laos we have rice, rubber and coffee. In Nepal we have citrus and honey. Pakistan, tomato, onion, dairy, fruit. In the Philippines you see rice, coffee, cocoa, fruit. Uzbekistan, fruit. And Vietnam, rice, groundnut and fish. This is only a part and we just found out there's a big diversity of different uh, um, uh, crops which are really uh, um, part of our project and where food losses play um, is a concern. The lessons learned uh, out of our former projects is that the causes for food losses are systemic and complex, therefore they need a systemic approach to be reduced. Focusing on storage only, like most of our former projects did, is therefore not enough. We have to consider the whole value chain and to identify hotspots of losses where most of the losses occur. Quality aspects gain more and more importance in, in global value chains and due to a growing number of urban consumers in partner countries. Identification of good and performing partner institutions is crucial for success and change. And cooperation with the private sector can facilitate upscaling of project activities and is an important point for us as well. So thank you for your attention for this first uh, brief overview on um, our ongoing projects and activities. I will now switch to a Word document on the draft terms of reference of um, study we are going to do uh, um, maybe in, I hope to start in August, on reducing food losses to improve food security, analysis of essential agricultural value chains in Nigeria and recommend recommendations for German development cooperation. I just, I just beg you, or ask you to look on the yellow marked text because we will scroll down in the next moments and we will not read everything. The aim of this study is to improve data availability concerning food losses in important food value chains in Africa and to identify options for German development cooperation to engage in food loss reduction programs. The crops we selected here is cassava and maize as they are strategic stable foods of many Africans living in rural areas or in fast-growing cities. And Nigeria has been chosen as a particularly interesting and promising case to conduct the study. So now we have to move a little bit um, down, to scroll down to see the structure and the methodology of the study. Uh, this study will consist in two parts. Part one will describe and analyze the value chains and quantify the losses in the value chain, whereas part two will estimate on the base of the data from part one the impact of food losses on natural resources like soil, water, biodiversity, and on climate like greenhouse gas emissions. Um, during this presentation, I want to focus on part one of the study, part two of the study. We are still working on and we could discuss this later. Part one of the study, which is going to start um, in, in, in July, latest the beginning of August, is, um, well, A, the consultant has to prepare a detailed concept of work. We don't have to go deep in that now, but if you come to point B, the consultant has to describe one or more typical value chains for cassava and maize from harvest till retailer and their system boundaries. He has to analyze quantitative and qualitative food losses and there we refer to uh, FAO calculation for food losses and want to harmonize with this methodology just to get data which are comparable later and which could see, uh, serve or also for a, a global assessment on food losses. So he has to analyze these food losses and the hotspots of losses. If applicable, he has to compare different harvest 
storing and processing technologies or procedures used by the producers and analyze them concerning their efficiency. And if applicable, you have to compare small-scale farming and processing versus large-scale operations. So please uh, move down now and scroll. No, sorry, I have to switch to the second page. Okay, here's the second page. We go on with uh, chapter C. The consultant should um, or has to identify the causes and positive or negative incentives for food losses, including socioeconomic and social aspects, and important drivers which should be considered in a loss reduction strategy. And chapter D he has to elaborate options under which conditions, under which criteria the results of the study could be generalized to any other region, either in Nigeria or in Africa. He has to identify or consider possible byproducts in the value chain, which could be used in another way to raise efficiency in the value chain. Um, he has point F to identify other important actors and partners in the private sector amongst other donor organizations and in the public sector. And point G, finally, he has to recommend options to reduce food losses on operational and on policy level for future German engagement. Uh, BMZ is our Federal Ministry of Cooperation. So these recommendations should be for national policy makers in rural development, how to tackle uh, uh, the problem of food losses. And the recommendations should be for concrete action to develop integrated projects for efficient and low loss food chains for public and private investors taking into account the needed investment, the technical feasibility, the possible trade-offs, and the social acceptance. The recommendations should be evaluated by a cost-benefit analysis to show their economic feasibility. They should then serve as a starting point for more detailed feasibility studies. So these are the outputs, the attended output of the study. If you scroll down and you come to the methodology, um, there you can find uh, some hints um, how the study should be done. I want to highlight uh, with the yellow marker that um, we are very keen that the experience of special networks like AFLIS and of other resource persons or institutions like we meet here together should be exploited to deepen the analysis of existing challenges and problems and to identify possible solutions. And the agency um, should be uh, visited um, in, in Nigeria. Um, okay, for the rest of the methodology, um, we will discuss this uh, in depth with the consultant as soon as he sent us his contact paper, which is attendant for the beginning of August. Um, so thank you very much. This was now the brief presentation of the terms of reference and I maybe give back to Selina. Right. Uh, I'm waiting for questions. Thank you very much, Heike, for presenting those two documents to us. Um, I'd like to open the floor to discussion. So um, please use your raised lower hand icon if you are joining via computer. If you are joining via telephone, I will be addressing you first because obviously you can't interact in that same way. Please always um, state your name and the organization you're calling from when you make your point. So going to our telephone um, callers, is there anyone who would like to um, ask a question or raise a point to Heike. Um, <clears throat> Mark Bernard, BLE. Hello, welcome. Yes, hello. Um, I would like to know, if are the terms of reference uh, available in electronic format? I got the presentation, but not the, the tours. 
Yeah. Um, yes, Mark, they, they will be available. We didn't send them from uh, just now because uh, until uh, this morning they have still been very draft, draft. And I would like uh, more, I think this is now enough maybe to share between us or Good. amongst us, but I okay. would like to, uh, to send it to you when we have a more final version of the draft. Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of Thank course, there's a time constraint. <laughs> okay, good. What What do you mean by time constraint, Mark? Yeah, you want to do it. You want a concept note by early August. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, in case uh, we need a, a work sharing because it's quite a big study. Yes, that's yeah. what I see. Mm -hmm. And it, it needs probably more than one competent person. So you need some agreement on the other side that people say, "Listen, we joined forces." Actually. Yes, so we need some time for consultations internally, and everybody's on leave. Yeah, but, but uh, okay, yeah, that's right. Um, we have uh, until now uh, two consultants who will deal with this pro project with part one, part one of the study. Part two of the study will be a third consultant, and. Um, as I'm not in Nigeria, for me the most important thing is now that we get the concept note from the person who is uh, in Nigeria and then I think that would be the right moment when we could start to share this by whom he's interested again and to look deeper inside. Okay. Good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So Mark, maybe you'd like to be in touch with Heike then um, bilaterally. I will give her email Thank address. Thank you. Yes. All right. Okay, is there anyone else? Um, I know that Elena is joining as well as Jürgen and Nikita are all joining via telephone. Would you, any of you like to raise a question? All right, in that case, um, we'll move over to everyone joining via computer. Um, I might have muted some of you along the way. Um, but I can see that Nancy um, would like to say something. So, Nancy, please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly, thanks. Okay, per perfect. Thanks. That was very, very interesting presentation. I think this is a wonderful opportunity. Just from the, well, I'm from FAO, but I'm FAO's liaison for the bank. From the bank's perspective, I sent an email around to people in the Africa region informing them that G uh, GTZ GIZ was doing this. And uh, I got some comments. One of the heads of the area who covers Nigeria was actually in Nigeria, and the bank has competitiveness, agricultural competitiveness projects in Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon. So what I'd like to do is just send them the, um, the terms of reference. And I guess the value of it is so that we can, we can find any, I'm sure they must have done value chain studies in Kassava and, and Maize, in all of these countries. So if we could share them with uh, Heike, maybe she could look at them so that they, she could actually draw from that information. I guess um, that's what we would be happy to do. I'll try to get that information to, to you. And obviously, we'd be interested in then having a discussion in terms of the methodology. How, you, how do you estimate post-harvest losses? And obviously, Robert and uh, F, uh, FAO and the AGS are experts in that, so then we can have an ongoing dialogue. But as soon as I get the terms of reference, then I'll turn it around and, and try to press the people from the Nigeria to give us some of the studies that they have ongoing. Many thanks, Nancy. Hi, could do you want to? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, excuse me, I was on mute. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nancy. I think this is a, a, a very good and feasible uh, um, way to do it. So I, I will send you uh, still uh, this week the terms and Mark to Mark as well. Uh, so you could uh, uh, send them to Nigeria and we just see what is coming back from them, from their value chain uh, projects. And in the second step, we could uh, go deeper in it. And that would only be in August. I don't know if you will be uh, in mid of August, if you will be uh, at, at your office or, or not. But and then we could make maybe a, a, a more a deeper insight into the concept of how to um, estimate and to assess uh, the food losses. Yeah. All right, thank you. 
Um, Robert, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Yeah, Robert van Otterdijk from the Agro Industries Division of FAO. Um, we are implementing the global initiative on food loss and waste reduction, which in its field service uh, follows a very similar approach as what GIZ is uh, proposing here for cassava and maize and the GIR. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. And I see a great area of uh, sharing uh, experience and resources. I mean, the approach is, I think, quite new and um, full of uncertainties. Uh, this type of real field studies in order to determine uh, food losses. Uh, but there is a lot to gain from it if, if it is done well. Uh, I have uh, one or two specific questions. Uh, uh, like you said, you have uh, identified two consultants for part one of the study. What is, where are they from and what is their background? Yeah, okay. Robert, one consultant is a local uh, consultant from um, a university in uh, Nigeria. His name uh, from Akura, I think. I don't know Nigeria. He is an agroeconomist and he did already a market opportunity study for us in, uh, on cassava and in maize in Nigeria. So he is the one who is going to uh, uh, make the analyze, um, to analyze the value chains and to estimate the food losses. For the part, recommendations for development cooperation. There we would take another consultant who is uh, more in uh, the area of um, um, con conception of, of um, projects, uh, how uh, the capacity building has to be done, how the institutions have to be um, supported how the policy environment, how um, um, maybe a national uh, consultants at the at the national level or at the regional level should be done. So this would be uh, an expert in um, in the programming of uh, development projects. And um, the person we have at the moment, uh, she is also she she is a he, uh, he is a she <laughs> it's a, it's, a, it's a female consultant. She's um, also an um, expert uh, in post-harvest losses. So this would be the second person. And the third person uh, would be uh, somebody for part two of the study uh, for the so-called um, ecological footprint. And uh, this is um, an, a German uh, consultancy office um, who will do this work probably. We are in close contact already now with them because they have to get certain data to do this type of ecological footprint and uh, the, the consultant who is now down there, he has to collect this data as well and some of these data like the type of soil or the quantity of nitrogen which is in cassava and so on are very hard to find uh, under uh, uh, those conditions and would be hard to find anywhere I think. So we are just, uh, uh, for the moment we are uh, discussing which kind of data she really needs to do her assessment, or how can we maybe adapt that? Okay, um, maybe we can be a bit helpful in, in the latter part that you said, uh, because uh, our natural resources department uh, just recently has, uh, or more than a month ago actually, has uh, recruited in the consultancy bureau indeed to, to make assessments of the environmental impact of food losses and food waste. So they, they will have an idea how to approach it. I can share uh, terms of reference and other things with you. But what I was wondering was, I mean, as you know, in Nigeria in the past decade, many, many activities on cassava. Um, oh, Robert, I, I don't know. I don't know, Robert. I don't hear him. Sorry, you haven't heard anything I said. Too bad. We did. We got until cassava. <laughs> oh. Or I touch the key on the keyboard. Uh, there have been many cassava activities taking place in Nigeria in the past decades, and there has been a uh, very active, uh, what was called, uh, presidential initiative on cassava. I don't know if that is still alive or whether there are still people um, active in the cassava area from this initiative. And then a more concrete question to you is: I mean, the authority on cassava and probably also maize in Nigeria, of course, is. IITA. 
Hij mm -hmm. uh, ziet dat ja, somewhere down on the bottom of your, your list of uh, collaborating partners, but have you not considered to to ask IATA to do the whole survey for you in the in the first place? Because I can imagine that they can also deal with the, the aspects of part two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Robert, for this. Uh, we chose we choose Nigeria um, just because cassava plays a, a big role. We first we first uh, uh, wanted to go to Ghana to do the work, but then uh, uh, we just found out that uh, there are so many even more work is going on in Ghana. So uh, Nigeria is maybe uh, an interesting place to do it. It is a very dynamic place to do it with a very lively uh, private sector who could be involved in later project activities. Concerning IATA, the point that IATA figures at the end of the list doesn't mean that we will uh, look at them um, only at the end. You are, you are right, they are a very important player and we have uh, direct personal contact with IATA. Uh, I phoned yesterday with a consultant and he is also in very good uh, uh, contact with IATA and uh, I think there will be some of the more important uh, uh, um, institutions uh, which we will uh, collaborate on this. Thanks, Heike. Um, just, Robert, if, if there's still some queries you have, can I suggest that the two of you maybe get in touch bilaterally afterwards? Just um, because we don't have that much time left, so we can, we can um, move on to some mm -hmm. others, if that's all right with the two of you. Um, Mathilde. Uh, yes. Hi. Hi, um, hi Ike. Actually, uh, my my comments were follow exactly what uh, what Robert was saying. I'm working for the natural department, uh, uh, natural resources department of FAO, and we're working on this issue of uh, footprinting of food loss. And so um, I wanted to have a little bit more detail because I see that uh, you are working on the on the energy footprint, but I wanted to know uh, what was the plan for the water footprint, the carbon, the bio. Uh, because you are working now on the global study on that, working on the building on the work from a robot team, and um, we are also looking for for global data and other data. So anything you will have on that? What? Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Matilda. I I didn't uh, understand all of of uh, your comments. At the end, it was difficult to listen. But I understood that uh, FIO is working on uh, footprinting uh, of food waste as well. Um, we um, we had got some of um, this information uh, that you are doing that, and we are very keen to cooperate on that. Uh, I told you that for part one, uh, part two of the study, we are still in the very beginning of the of the terms of reference, and I think we would still have time to uh, elaborate on that. Um, later on, uh, it will be definitely not only the energy footprint, it will be the footprint um, as well as uh, um, in the waste or in the use of uh, soil, water and biodiversity. So it will be an ecological uh, uh, so-called footprint on this specific uh, value chain. We just want to try out a methodology just on this specific value chain. We will see if we can generalize it to more broadly saying that is cassava and maize I don't, uh, in, in Nigeria, I don't know if this will work, but uh, our first uh, uh, work will uh, just focus on this special uh, value chain in, in Nigeria to, to give us uh, some data which will uh, help us uh, in, if you want, in political communication to say that is going on if those losses are Find, find place are taking place in this value chain. This and this natural resources are going to be lost. And um, yeah, that, that, that is the, fi the final objective of it. But in, in the terms and in the methodology, it is an, a, an experienced office who will do that for us. We will work with them together and we just started. And the only thing I know is the kind of data they need to do it. But I cannot tell you more about the methodology at the moment, but um, I'm, I'm very uh, looking forward to exchange uh, further with you um, just in the common, coming, coming days or coming weeks. Thank you. Um, I yes. just, uh, 
Marie-Lo Kutaz from SDC um, is with us today, but unfortunately she's having mic problems. So she just raised a top something with me, which I thought I'd share with you, Heike, and then maybe you can get back in touch with her, which is that um, in, on the document you showed of the mapping of institutions, she said SDC is missing, and they have a long experience in um, Central America and also new initiatives starting in um, South Africa, and they have specific website and material available for that. So unless you have um, sort of a direct comment now, oh, Marie can hear you, so you can say something now, or maybe pick up contact with her again afterwards. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mary Loa, for this um, hint. Um, um, I, as I told you, this map is just to show the uh, um, magnitude of uh, the actors. I, I don't uh, want to give you the feeling that we forgot your institution, but maybe you are right. We didn't uh, we didn't contact you before, and we didn't have you. Uh, um, we didn't know you, and so I I will be uh, very um, uh, looking forward to to integrate that um, into into the institutions for the next time. Great, thanks. Um, Keith, you just raised a point with me. Maybe you want to share that with everyone. Um, yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody, um, or good morning, uh, depending on where everybody is. Um, I was going to just add, we've actually got a, a um, European Union uh, FP7 funded project, which has many sort of similarities, I think, to, um, to your, your interests here. Um, the project is actually on cassava and yam, and um, we're working in um, Nigeria and Ghana, but we're also actually working in Asia, in Vietnam, and in Thailand as well. Um, but the project really is about how do we um, turn the losses from the value chain in cassava, which you're interested in, and convert those into gains. But the, um, the challenge that the European Union um, set us was that the losses could only be converted into um, something that could be used for food. We um, weren't allowed to um, use it, convert the, the, the waste into uh, non-food um, uses. Um, I'm, I, I, think, I think the reason for that was the European Union was already funding other projects on non-food uh, uses of waste and hence didn't want to, I guess, fund the same sort of projects twice. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't want to say too much, but I think what we're taking um, in our value chain is um, taking very much a value chain approach and trying to do an, an audit of the value chains with respect to the losses and where they occur and how and who's involved in that, um, which as far as we're aware um, hasn't been um, done before. Um, but also the other crucial part of this is we're um, linking that with marketing studies because um, there's no point looking at the waste unless you understand the markets as to where that uh, waste is going to go to. And obviously, therefore, we had to look at the uh, cost effectiveness of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I think there's actually a lot of interesting uh, links with what we're doing and uh, you're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Th 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 thanks a lot, Keith. So I understand that you are working um, in cassava in Nigeria as well. And yes. um, so did you, did you start already uh, this uh, project or is there somebody? Um, no, they, we have um, ongoing partners in Nigeria, um, which is the University of Agriculture, which is uh, based in the Biakuta in uh, Ogun State. Um, you know, we, we've been working them for many years, and um, you know the, that we have ec excellent relations with them. I mean, we also have excellent relations with IITA, of course. Key, thanks. Um, sorry to cut you off there, Heike. Uh, of course, yeah. Um, and you, the Keith, as well. Um, I think, thank you for raising that point. Um, I think that's interesting for everyone to hear. Again, maybe you can pick up um, the conversation with Heike afterwards, where you left off. I just, we're, we're really quickly running out of time. I, I do appreciate that, yes. 
And um, I just want to give our telephone callers another chance. Obviously, they can't raise their hands. So um, I just want to give Elena, um, Mark, who else is joining via telephone? Uh, Nikita. Is there anyone else joining by telephone who'd like to mention something or raise a question before we go? Jürgen? No? No comments. Thank you. Okay, no. great. <laughs> All right. Um, unfortunately, we have run out of time. And I'm sure there's lots of burning questions still waiting for Heike. But I will um, send you her email address so that you can get in touch with her and you can discuss these points further. I hope it's just a starting point for what looks like it's going to be quite an extensive um, discussion before this concept note is put together. So please don't hesitate to do that. I'm just checking. Um, Nancy is just telling me that um, World Bank is initiating a virtual discussion on post-harvest losses through a new interactive website, um, which aims to make lessons on post-harvest losses, post-harvest technology, sorry, generated through research and field-based experiences, readily accessible to development practitioners, farmers organizations, and farmers in developing countries. So it will be an online, it will be online in a week or so, she says, um, and we could aim to target experts in Nigeria to feed into the GIZ's knowledge on post-harvest losses. So that's <coughs> farmersmarket.org if you're interested in that, www.farmersmarket.org. Uh, oh, sorry, Farmers e Market. sorry about that, Farmers e Market. all written together. Um, unless there's any more, another burning question from anyone, I think um, we'll wrap up here today. Thank you very much for joining. I'm sorry for anyone who had any technical difficulties. Please let me know if you want to have a 10-minute WebEx um, session on getting to know the system um, more sort of one to one so that you can have all your questions cleared up. Um, one moment. Oh, Heike, of course, over to you before we finish up. Heike? Oh, you're on mute, sorry. For, uh, for summer vacation. Did you, did you get me? Um, I will be off for summer vacation, so I'm, I'm sorry if I don't react immediately, but I will react at the beginning of August. Thank you. Hello, may I still say something? Yes, go ahead. On the agenda, I saw that you also had an, uh, wanted to say something about a thematic meeting which was held on 28 June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, we had, uh, we had a, a so-called Fachgespräch. Uh, which was, um, with, uh, um, first of all, with German institutions. We get our Ministry of Agriculture, we get uh, Mark Bernard from Bley, we got the private sector and Sun University, and we do, did the first uh, meeting, thematic meeting, just to understand what is going on in Germany, which activities are going on, and um, um, we will have a project document, documentation later on, Robert, which is uh, in German as well. <laughs> So, if you're interested in it, I, I can send it to you, but <laughs> it, it was very interesting. Uh, we, we got uh, the research and we got the private sector and we got uh, poli politicians on the table to discuss uh, um, uh, topics of post-harvest losses. Okay. Um, I'll just leave you with one last info point from Keith, which is that the International Society for Tropical Root Crops has a Facebook page for networking for root and tuber crops. So if you're interested in that, um, go onto the web and have a look at that page. Right, and on that note, um, I'm going to say thank you very much to Heike um, for taking the time to tell us about GIZ's project and the terms of reference. And thank you to everyone else um, for joining us today. Um, and I hope that you'll be interested in joining another virtual briefing soon. We do all topics. If you're interested in holding your own briefing, please get in touch with the platform secretariat. And um, I hope to see you here again soon. So have a nice rest of the day, wherever you may be, um, and see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, right. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye. Nice okay, bye, everybody. Bye, bye. 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 Bye.